Hey, it's James Mulvaney here. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about how to find sponsors for your podcast. So let's say you've spent a long time working on building an audience, you've got a captivated group of listeners who are tuning into your podcast episode, and now you wanna monetize it, you wanna start earning from your podcast. Let's find out how to do that. All of that is coming right up, so stay there. So if you're new to this channel, welcome along. My name is James Mulvaney. I am an audio entrepreneur. I run radio.co, podcast.co, matchmaker.fm, and also Q Podcasts as well. And we work with a variety of clients in building and growing audiences and starting podcasts and also monetizing podcasts. And the question that comes up time and time again is, how do I find well-fitting sponsors for my podcast? I don't wanna be just running generic adverts that are gonna turn my listeners off or uh, kind of impact my audience figures. I wanna get sponsors that are a good fit for my audience, but also I wanna start making some money from my podcast. So in this video, I wanna dive into a few things. Firstly, um, looking at listener numbers. How many listeners do you actually need to get sponsorship? I mean, it's the question that everyone asks, right? Um, can you get sponsors if you only got a few hundred listeners? Do you need thousands? Do you need tens of thousands? Do you need millions of listeners? Let's talk about listener numbers firstly. Uh, then we're gonna actually dive into the three main types of sponsorship advert that you might be putting onto your podcast. Um, we're also gonna be talking about different platforms and services that are out there, which will enable you to connect with sponsors. And finally, addressing the question, will adverts ruin your podcast? And talking about how you can make it a little bit more engaging for listeners versus just kind of playing those annoying adverts that sometimes you hear before podcasts. You know, the ones I'm talking about, they're often advertising the same product and everyone just automatically switches off. Well, how do you make your adverts a bit more exciting, a bit more interesting? We're gonna be talking about that as well. Because ultimately, I want you to keep your podcast successful. I don't want you to go and do anything that's gonna go and ruin your chances of success or annoy your listeners. Okay, so firstly, let's talk about how many listeners you need in order to secure sponsorship. This is a question that I get asked time and time again. We've worked with podcasts, both big and small, in helping them secure sponsors. Um, and it really varies, okay? Firstly, the thing you need to ask is, how niche is your show? In, from my experience, sometimes if you're niche and you've got a smaller audience, but that audience is super focused, that can actually be a really good thing because sponsors will realize the value and the potential of the audience that's listening to your show. And if you're um, talking to companies that have got a great product fit for that audience, it can be really, really effective advertising. Now, it normally takes most podcasters a period of time to build enough audience to kind of start approaching sponsorship. There are no magic numbers, okay? Um, I'll start off by saying that, you know, it really varies. Um, but here is kind of a rough guide. Like, if you've been working, say, between sort of 12 and 24 months to build your audience numbers and you've started to get some success, great. Then you're probably in a good position to start looking for sponsors. If you just launched your podcast two weeks ago, unless you're a big celebrity, or you have a big pre-existing audience that you can like launch and market your podcast to, you probably need to put the work in, and try and get some numbers up before you start really looking for sponsors. As a rough guide, I, I thought I'd give you some figures. So I'd say if you've got uh, less than a thousand regular listeners, e.g. downloading each and every episode, probably gonna find it quite difficult to attract any kind of sponsorship. So if you've got around a thousand listeners, you know, you should be able to start looking for sponsors. I'd say that's a kind of a good benchmark of where um, most companies will say, okay, maybe we can consider advertising on this. Don't be expecting to make big bucks if you've only got a thousand listeners, but you might be able to pull in a few hundred dollars a month, especially if you can get a regular sponsor, someone who's gonna sponsor each and every episode, and you can come to an agreement with that company saying, okay, well, you've got exclusive rights to sponsor my podcast. The main thing is being able to demonstrate that your audience is a good fit for that that company or what products and services they're providing. But if you're maybe getting say 5,000 downloads per episode, and I know this might sound like a lot if you're just getting started, um, this is kind of what is considered, I suppose, a lot of industry folk would look at this as the magic number uh, as to where podcasts could really start pulling in significant revenue or attracting sponsors. A lot of um, brokers or, or podcast um, ad networks will expect to be getting 5,000 plus downloads 
for each episode before they really start looking at introducing you to advertisers and sponsors. However, it doesn't mean if you're getting less than 5,000 listens uh, for each episode, you can't find a sponsor. You might just have to do more of the work yourself and you might have to be prepared for people who just want to sponsor one show and see how the results go and then maybe they'll sponsor this next show. You might not necessarily be able to bring in consistent revenue. Um, However, if you're then, say, pulling in a large audience, let's say 10,000 plus listeners for each and every episode, that's when you really will start seeing significant results from your podcast. You'll start seeing regular income, you'll get guaranteed sponsorship for each episode, and hopefully you can kind of set some sponsorship up on maybe like a a longer retainer where you have a 24 month contract or something like that, where you've got, uh, you know, either one or two or multiple um, sponsors who are interested in actually advertising on your show. So those are kind of some very, very top level numbers. Now, don't be put off by thinking, oh, well, I've only got 500 people who are listening to my show. Because as I say, if those 500 people are really super targeted, let's say your show is um, about something really, really specific, uh, and you know how to go and approach the right kind of brands, um, that can be really valuable for those brands, you know, because 500 potential customers isn't something to be snubbed at. So go out there and speak to people. But be prepared to share as much data and analytics as you can, because ultimately it's about proving to sponsors uh, that your show is, number one, relevant to their audience or their potential customers, uh, but also showing that you've got that consistency. You know, you're not just getting one show where you've had a thousand downloads, but the next show only has 83. Uh, you want to be able to show that you're consistently bringing in listeners to each and every single episode. And also, if you can show a nice growth curve, people like to see that as well. So here are three main types of ads that we see in the podcasting world. Firstly, host red ads. These, in my opinion, are the most effective. And if you're going to go out and pitch to potential sponsors, this is something that can be really, really appealing to them because you're basically saying, look, don't worry, you don't have to have uh, you know, some kind of advert, audio advert made like you would if you're going to perhaps be placing spots on the radio. Um, I can actually read out about your products and service and do this sort of selling for you. So many people tag me on Instagram, even on Telegram and in my Twitter DMs in a picture of them starting their Huel journey. And it's one of the most amazing things in my life. All you need to do is provide me with a script or tell me about the benefits of the product or the service that you offer and I'll actually do the hard work. And the great thing about host red ads is they are very, very effective when it comes to actually conversing people and selling products and services because ultimately the familiarity there between the audience and the host, e.g. you, is very strong. They'll almost feel like they can kind of know, like, and trust you. And if you're then putting a commercial message or saying, you know, go and check this product or service out and you can sell it in a kind of convincing, uh, you know, an authentic, not sort of trying to like mislead people or anything, um, in, in, in a great way, people will generally go and check it out or they might, curiosity will spark the interest and they'll say, okay, let's go and click on that website or let's go and check out that sponsor. Um, the, one of the most important things I would say here is if you're doing this, make sure you've got a way of tracking it. So you can prove to sponsors that people are t- turning from um, your podcast, e.g. the audio, because there's not always going to be somewhere where they can click a link. Uh, you might say go to blah, 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 dot com forward slash your name, or it might even be a unique domain name that you register, which you read out, and then you can track the number of clicks going to that domain. Is of any interest, then go to freetrade.io forward slash fellows and get randomly allocated a free share worth between three pounds and 200 pounds. And you can say to your sponsor, well, look, I referred you 3000 people last month or whatever, whatever it might be, just so you've got that data. So again, if the sponsor perhaps isn't wanting to commit to a longer term thing, if you can show them that your host red ads are really effective, they're more likely to convert. The next one is dynamic ads. Now, dynamic ads are kind of what you'd imagine to be a bit more traditional, like radio advertising. These are generally inserted automatically uh, into your podcast. They will be provided by an ad network, okay? So I'm talking about stuff that is um, like largely done uh, via an algorithm. So this will be what the ad network thinks your listener wants to hear. And different listeners might get served different adverts because uh, advertising networks actually kind of hold data and profiles on where they think people are listening from. So for example, if I'm listening to your podcast from here in Manchester in the UK, I might have a different advert than someone listening, say, in LA uh, or in California or New York or wherever. You know, again, different countries, different languages will have uh, advertising that's tailored to them. 
So ad networks are great. The thing that we've noticed generally with these kind of programmatic automated ads, um, they won't command as much uh, as a higher price tag in terms of the CPM, which is cost per milli, which is basically the, the, the amount that that advertiser will pay per thousand impressions. Um, is generally lower than when it's host read. Okay, so if you can sign up a sponsor directly, you can actually go out and approach companies, find people who are relevant or products are relevant to your podcast. Generally speaking, you'll be able to command a much higher fee than if you're just relying on an ad network to serve your ads automatically. But if you're getting huge numbers of downloads, sometimes the ad networks are the best way to go. The third type of advertising which you might want to consider, and this is particularly useful for smaller shows is affiliate marketing. This is not necessarily when you're charging for sponsorship, but you might be getting a fee each time someone takes a particular action, signs up to a product or service, or it could be that you're taking a percentage of cut of the product that they're buying. Um, again, look out there for different affiliate promotions. This is something you can really start doing from day one. I am so fully converted, it probably sounds like this is a sponsored video for the MX Master 3, and it is not the case, but I will leave an affiliate link in the description below. I do get kickback from that, so if you do buy one, just know that's an affiliate link. Um, might not be that effective if you haven't got a huge number of listeners, but if you can convince your listeners to take action and go and buy or go and check out or sign up for products and service, and there are affiliate deals often out there where they'll pay out for someone even taking a free trial. So it might be that you say, go and try this service, it's free or it's heavily discounted for the first year, and you'll actually get a, uh, a referral fee for referring that customer. So, you know, again, that can be really, really great when you're first getting started. It's not necessarily guaranteed income, um, but it's a useful way of perhaps testing uh, your audience's responsiveness to commercial messages. Okay, so next up, I wanted to touch on um, a couple of platforms, a couple of services, which will help you actually connect with potential advertisers. Um, bear in mind, these services aren't free. They're obviously gonna wanna take a cut of any sponsorship that you receive, but it can sometimes make it easier, and again, uh, these services might not be for you if you've got very, very low download numbers because, again, they want to guarantee a certain number of um, impressions for their advertisers. Um, a couple to check out. Number one, Red Circle. Um, this is a company that works with you to build a kind of an inventory of ad categories uh, and brand deals. And they're really, their thing is that they make the whole process easy. So they kind of save you time. You've got a podcast that's established and you're already making uh, significant downloads from each episode. Um, go speak to these guys. Uh, they work away in the background and basically they'll say, look, we've got these podcasts to a sponsor and they are a great fit for your type of business or your type of service and we'll run um, you know, your adverts on all of these different podcasts. So they kind of have uh, an inventory of podcasters who are running different types of shows with different types of audiences and they have an inventory of advertisers who are looking to place adverts on those shows. There's also another service out there called Podcorn and in a very similar way to Red Circle, uh, they work with podcasters to help them monetize shows. So again, you want, might want to check those guys out. Um, they will potentially introduce you to sponsors. They can help you monetize your podcast. Again, you need to think about your download numbers. Um, and again, they will take a commission of whatever you earn. Um, but go and check out those two services, Red Circle and Podcorn. Uh, we've seen podcasters getting some success with them. Okay, finally, I wanted to address the question, will adverts ruin my podcast? It's one of these things, isn't it? That, you know, if you just spent a year or two years building an audience, nurturing that audience and connecting with them, you kind of don't want to then start slapping in adverts constantly and, you know, annoying people because you're kind of scared that, well, actually those people might start switching off. Uh, this is a conundrum that a lot of podcasters face because ultimately, you know, you spend time building an audience. You kind of want to start having it pay you uh, for at least for your time at some point. Um, and that's why a lot of people go into podcasting in the first place is because, you know, they're trying to do it as a business. It might be a side hustle to begin with, but you know, it gets to a point where you think, OK, I want to start making some money from this. Um, I need to pay the bills and it's taking a lot of my time to produce it. So how do I actually find uh, a way of introducing monetization into the show without pissing off my listeners, okay? And the first thing I'd say is kind of go easy. You don't want to be ramming adverts down your listeners' throats constantly. Um, there are some podcasts that are too spammy. You know, they've got too many commercial messages in them. Likewise, sometimes the, the sort of pre and post roll ads can be a bit of a turn off for listeners. If the first thing that someone hears when they press play is an advert, 
it doesn't always make for good listening experience. But if you can get your commercial message in your podcast, maybe after the first few minutes, or even perhaps do something that, as I said earlier, like a host read ad where you're actually talking to your listeners directly versus just using kind of pre-produced 30 second ad spots, that can create for more and more pleasant, and more sort of um, uh, intimate listening experience than just kind of ramming adverts down people's throats. It's something to bear in mind. And again, this is why a lot of podcasters don't actually choose to use advertising, but instead they would choose to try and get listeners to support them by donating or by subscribing for premium content or even by subscribing to get ad-free content. Because there are different ways of monetizing your podcast. I've done a video on this in in the past. Uh, I'll put a link up above so you can go and check that out if you like too. Um, So thanks for listening. Um, I'm interested to know if you're thinking about monetizing your podcast, put a comment below. If you found this video useful, I'd really appreciate a big thumbs up. Always helps uh, because I enjoy creating content like this. And when you give me a thumbs up, the videos go out to more people that help help more folks and all around, uh, they help the channel as well. And of course, if you're new here, please hit that subscribe button because I'm pushing out videos just like this one every single Friday. Thanks for watching. I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now. Hey, wait, before you go, perhaps you're looking to start a podcast for your business. And did you know that most businesses make the same exact mistakes? Whenever we work with clients who are struggling to get their podcast off the ground or they're not getting the traction that they deserve, it turns out that most of the time they're making the same mistakes. So what I've done is I've compiled a guide, which is called the five step business podcast checklist, which will show you exactly what you need to know to get your podcast up and running without making the same mistakes that most other people do. So you can download it for free at jamesm.com slash podcast. That's jamesm.com slash podcast. Go and grab your copy today.